Today, we will review a brand new fisheye lens that you should know as a 2D videographer who is looking for that low angle old school hip hop music video look to pair with your gimbal like what you see right here or for the professional virtual tool creator to pair with your brand new full frame mirrorless camera like the Sony Alpha 1 right here or with the Canon R5 native RF mount. Introducing TT Artisan 7.5mm f2.0 manual for shine lens. We will compare the TT Artisan with another community favorite, Sigma 8mm f3.5 for both 2D photography and 260 photography. Unlike most reviews you saw on the internet, I will show you some potential problems, especially the concern for professional virtual tool creators, like lens flare you saw right here, and ghosting in the high contrast area when using the ND1000 filter, and how to plan ahead to avoid those problems. If you don't have time to watch the entire in-depth review and the PT Guri tutorial for this setup, here is what I think. I absolutely love this lens. I'm so happy that I bought it. Credit to some folks suggestion in the 260 panorama photography community. It is sharp, easy to use, and does things that none other fisheye lens can, like long exposure 360 photography in bright daylight with ND1000 filter, and better 360 actual photography with the largest aperture in the fisheye lens market. If you are curious to learn more and to level up your virtual tour photo quality, let's jump right in. Hey, what's up everybody? It's your boy Hugh here from Creator Up. There are lots of reviews already on this new lens, so I won't bother you with another marketing message. You can read more on their official website. It is really well built, this lens, with a full metal body. Very small compared to the Sigma 8mm right here. It is the only fisheye I know that has a native RF mount for the Canon R5 shooter. And no matter what mirrorless camera you use, you can find a native mount to keep your setup small and nimble. It is great for travel 360 photographer like me. One thing I love about this lens is the handling. The aperture ring has clicked so I never worry about missing the aperture. The focus ring is very solid and never drift like my Sigma here. When under pressure, taking hundreds of 360 photos on a job, trusting your focus ring is the key. It goes from f2 to f11. For traditional 2D photographers who love to get that beautiful bouquet, you would love this lens. It focuses at 12.5 cm, that is the sensor to the subject distance, so it can get extremely close to subject with the full subject in frame and beautiful bouquet in the background in Aperture f2.0. Oh, did I mention the price? The TT Eisen 7.5mm costs only 150 US dollar. My Sigma 8mm here costs 899 US dollar, and I still need the E mount adapter to use it on my Sony Alpha One. So it is about 1,000 versus 150 US dollars. This is an APS-C lens, but we only care about using it with a professional mirrorless camera like the Sony Alpha One, Sony A7R Mark IV, and Canon R5. If you want to know why these are the best camera for professional virtual tour or any professional photography, check out this video right here. First, for full frame shooter, you need to know that it's not technically a 7.5 millimeter lens. It is more like 8.32 mm according to PT GUI right here. As it also has some blue vignetting around the edges, so it is more like 10 mm give or take. But no worry, it will still stitch effortlessly with only 3 shots, just like the other 8 mm lens. I will use 4 shots though with my brand new Mega C2 from Nodal Ninjas, as you see right here. You don't need Mega, 
I like Mega is because it can be programmable. So my PD GUI template with the TD Artisan will always work as I expected with no surprise. By the way, I am reviewing this game changing auto panel head for Gigapixel 360 Virtual Tour in my next video. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. The sun shape of this lens is very small on the short side and it can be used unshaded in vertical mode on the full frame sensor, which is not possible with the Samyang 8mm 2.8 and 7 Artisan 7.5mm f2.8. Even with the Sigma 8mm here, which is without sun shape at all, TT Artisan in vertical FOV, you can see more in Nadia and Xenex. For those of you lazy 360 photographers out there who absolutely hate Xenex and Nadia shot, this is a very good news for you. Yes, the horizontal FOV is smaller than Sigma, but since we are not doing two shot 360 photo like the Antonia How 200 right here, we have enough overlap not to worry about the stitching. Another noticeable advantage is the large sensor coverage for a full frame camera, as you see right here. And this means more detail for distant objects, as you can see right here compared to Sigma in both f2.8 and f8. For close up objects in the center, the sharpness is the same as the expensive Sigma lens, which is very impressive. What about a wide open aperture in f2? Let's take a look at all the aperture in terms of center sharpness. Go to my blog post right here if you want to zoom in and down the image to see in Photoshop yourself. For center sharpness, f2 is as sharp as other aperture, which is very impressive. This is great news for 360 time-lapse actual photographers. What about the edges? Let's zoom in 400% on the left edges and take a closer look. Well, in fact, let's zoom in 800%. F2 is soft as expected for any fisheye lens, but it is still usable. F2.8 is sharper than F2 and is also sharper than F4. So if you need light, I will go for F2.8, but not use F4 in any condition. F5.6 and F8 are where the lens is really sharp edge to edge. That is where you want to set in 99% of the time for 260 virtual tour. F11, deflection start to kick in, so I wouldn't suggest use F11 neither. So to recap, for TD Artisan 7.5mm, you should use F5.6 or F8 in most situations. F2.8 if you are stuck in a dark corner without light. F2 for actual photography where the edges are mostly black anyway. And never use F4 or F11. Compared to Sigma, TD Artisan is sharper on the edge as well. In this image, you also see less chromatic aberration on the TD Artisan. This is in f5.6. If you want even less chromatic aberration, f8 is even better as you can see. I wouldn't worry too much about fisheye chromatic aberration as long as you shoot in RAW, which you should do anyway if you're Sony Alpha 1. Then you can just take it out in post in one button inside Adobe Lightroom. Next, let's talk about sun stars. Here are the sun star in all exposure. You start getting sun star at f2.8, which is a good news. If you don't know what sun star is, then this feature does not really concern you. If you do and you are longing for that sun star as your signature look in your 360 photography, then that is what you need to know. It does not have pointy sun star like the Zeit lens. It is kind of messy until you hit F8. So if you need sun star with kind of pointy look, better stay at F8. Flare resistant. This one I got spoiled by the Sigma 8mm. As you see right here in this video, Sigma has a very minimal lens flare. The big ring is outside of the image circle. Now take a look at TD Artisan. When the sun is directly pointing at the lens, you see all kind of flare. The red ring probably is the biggest issue. 
it covers the entire lens. As you see, it goes away immediately when the sun moves out of the center. It also has this very iconic flare when the sun is on the side. So, if you hate lens flare, try to avoid this sun location. For 360 photo with fisheye, it rarely points the sun directly into the sun except sunrise and sunset. So, be mindful of that, then you'll be fine. The good news is, this lens does not have veiling flare. If you don't know about what is veiling flare, check out your Insta 261X footage while pointing the camera to the sun. Now, let's talk about the ND1000 filter that comes with the lens. It allows you to do long exposure photography in bright daylight, as fisheye lens cannot use the front ND filter. You can screw in the ND filter in the back like so. Here is the 360 photo taken with the ND1000 with 1.3 seconds exposure in ISO 250. As you see, kimchi here has a cool motion blur, same as all the trees right here. Well, maybe this is a bad example as long exposure photography only look good in moving water situation. What I really want to show you though in this 360 photo is the problem of the ND1000. Right here in the high contract area, it looks white with ghosting. Here, the same photo without the ND1000. As you see here, it should be black shadow. You will also see double images if you go up to f11. This is shot at f5.6, so no double image. To avoid this problem, you should stay under f4 when using the ND1000 filter. Now, let's talk about stitching an interior virtual tool photo. You are looking at a 3 bracketed HDR360 photo captured with the TT Artisan 7.5mm at f5.6. That is stitched with 4 side and 1 zenith and 1 nadir shot. This is my recommendation for a high-end virtual tool workflow. As you see right here in PT Guri, if you drop in all 6 photos and pick the TT Artisan lens profile, which you need to update to the latest PT Guri 12, then all you need to do is to hit a line and you get a perfectly stitched 360 panel with no air and no extra control points adjustment. It is that easy thanks to the Nodo Ninja Mega C2 programming and the magic of PT Green. For most of you, you probably do not want to capture the Zenet and the Nadia top and bottom. So let's delete the Zenet and Nadia and check it out. Now you see, PD Guri can still stitch TD Artisan, no problem. But if you look up in this area, in the sitting area, you see this ugly blue line. Remember I mentioned earlier, this lens has a blue-ish veneting around the edges. So all you need to do is to tell PD Guri to not use the edges as a stitching, so to avoid this stitching issue. You can simply by turning off the fine optimum seam right here and it will be better immediately. If you pan all the way up, you still see some bluish tint and the tip is blue. Now, I'm going to teach you another trick in DSLR to see photography that is usually not mentioned in beginner tutorial on the internet. This trick is going to work on all fisheye lens that has a discoloring zenith ceiling or the ceiling has a pinch like this. All you need to do instead of shooting the panel at zero degree is to tilt the camera like five degree upward. In Mega C2, it is simply to move your arm up a little bit, then run the Mega C2 or manually move your Nodo Ninja 6 like three or four times. Now, open them up in PT Green, you see the blue tint is gone and the pinch is gone as well. Again, no control point is needed. It does create a little hole in the nadia, but it is all right as you are going to patching the nadia anyway in post. If you don't know how to patch your nadia, check out this data driven tutorial right here. The same concept can be used in DSLR or mirrorless camera. So final question, F 5.6 or F8, which should you choose if lighting does not really matter? 
Well, let's zoom in 400% in the Stitch 360 photos, and you see F8 is still slightly better than F5.6, but it is really close. If you are that perfectionist, use F8. will give you the sharpest result. What about the ring they advertise on the website to create a full fisheye circle like the Sigma 8mm? Well, as you see right here, it cut out your image. So my suggestion is never ever use that ring on full frame sensor. It cut out the FOV of your lens and introduce more vignetting. You won't be able to stitch in PT degree as well without a Zenit shot, so don't do it. Thank you for watching this in-depth review of the brand new TT Artisan 7.5mm. It makes me want to shoot more mirrorless 360 photos and be more creative in 360 photography. I can't wait to show you some of my long exposure 360 photos of nature soon on my Facebook page, 360 Creator, right here. If you have not already, please follow me on Facebook where I will show more creative sample of the TT Artisan with my Sony Alpha 1 and Long Dog Ninja Mega C2 right here. Talking about Mega C2, I can't wait to show you my review video. This is one of the most exciting tech in the professional virtual tour industry in late 2021. It allows you to shoot 360 photo with any lens, so you can have a zoom lens to take multiple photos to create gigapixel 360 photo with just one click. I don't want to give away too much, so you have to wait for my official review and tutorial series on the Mega C1 and Mega C2 of Noto Ninja. So don't forget to subscribe if you are new here, hit the notification bell so you don't miss out any further tutorial and always stay on top of your virtual tour game. Go out there, make some money and be creative. I will see you next time, my friend. Ciao.